Okay, here we have a problem that is sinusoidal in nature. One day in the middle of summer, the high tide occurred at 522 a.m. You see a scientist measuring the depth of the water, and you ask her, what is the, what is the depth? The very intelligent scientist yells, 22 feet. You jot down the time and the depth, knowing that you may be able to do some calculations later in the day. Knowing that the depth of the water is a sinusoidal function that has a period of one half lunar day. Now, one half lunar day is the same thing as, or approximately, 12 hours and 24 minutes. So knowing that every 12 hours and 24 minutes, you're going to be in that same um, position of depth. So you're going to have that same amount of depth every 12 hours and 24 minutes at 11.34 a.m., which is not 12 hours and 24 minutes later, the difference between 5.22 a.m. and 11.34 a.m. is 6 hours and 12 minutes. So not quite a full cycle later, but exactly one halfway through the cycle you're at a maximum depth initially of 22 feet. Six hours later and 24 minutes, or six hours and 12 minutes later, which is halfway through the cycle, you'll go from a maximum to a minimum. So you ask the scientist, what's the depth halfway through that cycle? And the scientist says 14.5 feet. So we need to create that sinusoidal function of time. So here we go. So a couple of important things. We have high tide is occurring at 522 a.m., which is giving us a depth of 22 feet. Six hours and 12 minutes later, which is halfway through the cycle, so that's 1134 a.m., we have a depth of 14.5 feet. So high tide is producing a high or a maximum depth. So this right here is a max depth. And then at 1134, we're going to have a minimum depth and that minimum depth is going to be 14.5 feet. So if I were sketching this, let's try and make this a little bit better. So if I'm sketching this, we've got a minimum of 14 Point five feet and we have a maximum of 22 feet. So that's our outputs. So Y is going to stand for the depth of the water in feet. And then along the x-axis we've got our time. So we're going to say along the x-axis, since we're talking about hours and minutes, we're going to say the number of hours past midnight on any given day. Whichever, whichever day this is, this is that one day in the middle of summer, that's the number of hours past midnight on that day. So number of hours past midnight. So this would be zero hours past midnight, which would give us midnight. And then if I say this right here is five hours and 22 minutes past midnight, we're talking about five and 22 sixtieths. 
I'm going to erase the number of hours past midnight. This way you can see what I'm writing here. So 5 and 22 over 60, which would be 300 and 22 over 60. So that's that value right there. So that would be the number of hours past midnight. And we're at a maximum right there. And then six hours later, so if that's five hours, this should be about six hours right here. So six hours would put us at 11. 12 minutes would give us 33. So that would be six, six, zero plus 33 would be 693 over 60. 11 times six is 66, so 660 plus 33 would definitely be 693. Good. That's gonna give us a minimum. And then halfway between six hours and 12 minutes, six hours and 12 minutes, halfway between that is three hours and six minutes. So if I wanted to find out this value right here, I would add three to five, that would give me an eight. I'm gonna do this in a different color, this way you can see. That would be eight, and then I'm gonna add six minutes to the 22, so that would be 28 over 60. So I've got 60 times eight is 480, plus 28 would be 508 over 60. And that's gonna give us halfway between the max and the min. Now that halfway between the max and the min is the midline. So that halfway between 22 and 14.5 should be 18.75. So if you need to pause and do that math, make sure that you can figure out the halfway point between 14.5 and 22. That's our midline, so that's our D value, 18.75. So that's happening right there. Well, it's going to happen again three hours and six minutes after hitting the minimum. So three hours and six minutes would be 11 plus 3 is 14. 33 plus 6 is 39. So I take 14 times 60 which would give me 84. So 840 plus 39 is 879 over 60. And I'll be right back there at the midline again. So, so here we've got our, our nice sinusoidal, 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 sinusoidal curve. Now, if I want to use the cosine curve, I'm going to shift over to this value right here. So if I use a cosine curve, I'm gonna use this as my phase shift. So this would be the cosine phase shift. and with a positive amplitude, so with a positive A. Now the reason that A would be positive is because we're, our phase shift is shifting over to the maximum. If our phase shift shifted over to the minimum right here, then we would have a negative A, a value, but I don't wanna shift that far, it's not necessary. So my equation has a d value, it has a cosine function versus the sine function. Now I need to find the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance between the midline and the maximum. The amplitude here is 
3.25. So we've got A is equal to 3.25. We've got D is equal to 18.75. We've got C, our C value with a cosine curve is 322 over 60. Now I just need the B value. I'm going to make the B value as easy as possible here. B is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. The period is 12 hours and 24 minutes. I'm going to use my calculator. When I put 12 hours and 24 minutes into my calculator by putting 12 plus 24 divided by 60, my calculator gives me 12.4. So I can reduce the 2 and the 12.4 to get pi over 6.2. So either one of these is a valid B value. That says value. Doesn't really look like value, so I'm just gonna. So either one works. Now, if you hit fraction to decimal and you wanna make that a fraction, your calculator should be able to do that for you. The calculator should give you 5 pi over 31. So as a fraction, pi over 6.2 is 5 pi over 31. Now with all of that said, we're able to write our equation. So our equation is y equals our midline, which we said was 18.75, a positive a value of 3.25, the cosine curve, Oh, we don't write out the whole word cosine. So 3.25 times the cosine. Pi over 6.2, if you'd like to write that, parentheses, x minus our c value of 322 over 60. Now, I did all of these calculations pretty much without a calculator. Um, once you put these values into your calculator, you could definitely get fractions if you wanted. So you could get put these decimal values into fractions. You could put this fraction into a reduced form. Obviously, 2 goes into both of those numbers. It can be simplified. Or you can just leave it the way it is. I like leaving it just the way it is. Whoa! I like leaving it just the way it is because, um, let's highlight the darn thing because it's just easier to do that. It, it just looks nicer, you know? It, I take that back. It doesn't look nicer. It just looks simpler on the brain. Less work. So we're going to go with the less work. We're going to keep it just the way it is. going to highlight it. Kill a few more seconds here off the clock. And that is how we come up with the equation. Once you've got the equation, make sure that you are in what mode? Because we said 2 pi, our mode must be in radian. I'm writing. You can see that I'm writing. Nothing's happening. There it is. Our mode must be in radians. So don't forget that because that will mess you up on the questions that the problem asks. If you can get the equation, I feel very comfortable that you can answer these questions right here. I will quickly tell you what it is that we have to put in just to make sure that we've got this. Uh, when we are putting in, let's see, trying to not text pen, creative pen maybe. Let's see, cre no, not the creative pen. That's going to do all rainbows and stuff. Um, let's do the crayon. I just want a different type of pen that I can use here. For 2 a.m., 
that means that x equals 2. Bad idea, right? Yeah. Two hours after midnight would be 2 a.m. Uh, 9.30 p.m., x equals 9 plus 12 is 21. 30 minutes past midnight would be, uh, or 30 minutes past the hour would be 0.5. So 21.5. The crayon was a really bad idea. I, I, I'm sorry, that I, I'm trying here. How about the calligraphy pen? That makes it a little different. 21.5. So those would be your two inputs to get your outputs for each one of those depths. And then the first time that day that the depth is at 15 feet. So look here. We It looks like the first time that day might actually be just past midnight. If it's zero hours past midnight, then we know that we're still in the 12 o'clock hour. If it's one hour past midnight, then we know we're in the one o'clock hour, and so on and so forth. So we're going to calculate that intersection point. Once we calculate that intersection point, um, we can take out the value that's before the decimal place and then just take that decimal um, portion of an hour, multiply it by 60, and whatever the whole number is, that's the number that would show on a digital clock. So um, hopefully this helps get you started on this problem or feeling a little bit more comfortable in how to come up with the equation for writing the equation um, of a sinusoidal function for this tide problem.